Hey friends, Peggy Hall back with you from the healthyamerican.org. Why do you think it is that some people fall for the hogwash hook, line, and sinker? Yet there are others like you and me who are able to read between the lies. I've been thinking about this for some time. What is it that sets the intelligent people apart from the others. What are those signs of intelligence? This has nothing to do with degrees or how many years you spent in school. In fact, it has nothing to do that with that, in my opinion. And I came up with about 10 different attributes and characteristics that I want to share with you. And I would love to hear from you in a comment what you think are those attributes and characteristics of an intelligent person. And then we'll share those together. First, I wanna share a message from the sponsor of this video. So let's hop right on over to gutcleanseprotocol.com slash Peggy. I will have a link for you in the description box below. So I would like you to watch this video and as I say, I'll have a link for you and I want to let you know uh, what you need to know about that. And if you have any issues with your digestion, then this is possibly caused by a potential toxin that is in a lot of the quote, healthy foods out there that scientists have been telling us to eat um, with that fraudulent food pyramid for a long time. And you know what I think about uh, government science and scientists. So this potential toxin can cause digestive issues, according to Dr. Gundry, who is a world renowned cardiologist. And by the way, uh, just as an aside, he is against the uh, cooties hogwash that has been sloshed all over us. This has been affecting uh, millions of people nationwide. So there are warning signs, including weight gain, fatigue, digestive discomfort, and stiff joints, and even skin problems. So Dr. Gundry explains all of these side effects that are often mistaken for normal signs of aging because digestive issues develop usually over a matter of years and sometimes even decades. So I want you to go to that video that I will have linked for you below, and then you can learn all about this damage that is probably caused by these health foods, and that is far from normal. So the good news is that you can easily fix it. Uh, from your own home. It is that simple. So you just have to know which foods are actually healthy and which contain this hidden potential toxin. So I'm not giving you any advice about that, but I want you to watch that video from Dr. Gundry and it is at gutcleanseprotocol.com. And the years of research that he has put into this, he has created this informative video for you at gutcleanseprotocol.com. All right, friends, let's talk about uh, intelligent signs out there. Are there any signs of intelligence out there? You are a blessing to me here as a part of my healthy American community because you are intelligent, you're sophisticated, you're savvy, you're a little snarky sometimes just as I like it, and you're supportive of other subscribers and viewers on this platform. And I really love that we can have intelligent discussions well, there are some that stumble across this channel and they don't really know what we're all about here. And sometimes they can leave rather vulgar and uh, personal attacks that are masquerading as comments. But what I love is to have intelligent conversations, even if we have a differing opinion. So I came up with a list of, I'm just gonna look at my notes here, of uh, 10 qualities that for me are signs of intelligent life. Again, has nothing to do with degrees on the wall or the years that you spent in school. I have many lovely, healthy Americans from all walks of life. In particular, I have a, like one of my top researchers that is always sending me insights and videos and links. He fixes cars for a living and he actually understands a lot of what's going on in our society because of the lack of spare parts for cars, which means they don't want us driving our older cars. And I've got a video for you all about that the kill switch and why I drive an older car and always will. But again, some of the smartest people I know probably are under 12 years old. So it has nothing to do with age or really education in terms of, you know, public education, but it has to do with what I think these items that I'm going to list off for you. So number one, I think intelligent people ask questions. They have a curious mind. They are able to discern patterns and dig deeper and not just take things at a surface level. I would summarize that as saying that intelligent people pay attention. They are aware, they observe, and they dig deeper. They just don't 
like look at things and kind of move on. They have a curious mind and they want to learn and they, for the most part, are probably self-taught. So the other thing that I think gets overlooked a lot in terms of intelligent people, and that is these are people that don't take things personally. And, and I know I'm a public you know, figure here and I take a lot of hits. And I will tell you that it stings from time to time, especially when I feel that I wasn't able to get my point across. And that's why sometimes I will do follow-up videos trying to explain again what I explained the first time. And people tell me, Peggy, what are you doing? You don't need to spend time explaining yourself or clarifying. They weren't able to get it. And I understand that. I have that perfectionist streak where I want to make sure that, again, no soul is lost to truth. But people that take things personally, that get bent out of shape, that think that I'm talking directly to them when I'm making a comment, I would say that for me, intelligent people normally don't fit into that category. I have done many videos where I've made general comments and people have emailed me saying, I can't believe that you called me out. It's like, I never said your name. I never used you as an example. I might be talking about a hundred other people, but somehow they took it personally. So understanding that people hurt people, hurt people. That's a saying that I've heard and I believe. And there are people that are looking for a target. And we know that in the last few years of this hogwashing, the last few decades, the last you know few centuries where people have been bamboozled and duped into uh, believing things that are not true. And then when they are confronted with the reality, they experience cognitive dissonance. What they think is real, does not match up with new evidence. And what they do is they lash out at the person that brought that new evidence. You've experienced that, haven't you? I, I certainly have. <laughs> so here's another trait of intelligent people. And I would say it goes along with that second one I mentioned, which is intelligent people by and large are emotionally mature. And what I mean by that is they can discuss different points of view. They can even entertain another point of view without getting angry at that person or having a complete, you know, blowout or blow up uh, fist fight over it. And I do understand that emotions run high and heaven knows I have had my share of rants and I flipped my lid many times and I acknowledge that, but I'm not, but I'm kind of doing it in a public way. It's not something that I'm, I'm doing one-on-one. -on -one. No one is getting hurt. But I do recognize that as an area where I can grow a little bit. And I actually have videos on this channel about standing your ground and about dealing with difficult people. I have another one that's called um, talking about or having the hard conversations. And all of these are ways of having these discussions without letting the other person get the best of you emotionally. When our emotions run high, it hijacks our thinking mind and it makes it even more difficult to have those conversations from a rational, sober-minded point of view. I've got lots of this kind of teaching over at my second channel, which is called Living Swell with Peggy Hall. And I hope that you will go there and subscribe to that channel just just in case YouTube thinks that my truth is too hot to handle and they want to take this channel down, I'm very, very careful in how to outwit the nitwits with my code words and so forth. But be sure that you're subscribed there to PeggyHall.tv. Plus, it's a, I'm sorry, it's um, Living Swell with Peggy Hall. Well, PeggyHall.tv is a backup channel. But on YouTube, you can go to Living Swell with Peggy Hall and we talk about different things than just current events. So here's another one. I would say uh, this is one of the most important things, and that is intelligent people are able to talk about ideas and principles and values. They can, I'm going to say they can talk outside the box. It's not just about sort of surface information, but intelligent people are willing to have these challenging conversations, even if they don't have all of the answers. I mean, I have a lot of questions and I don't always have the answers, but I think that the questions are very important. And I love to talk about things other than sports, weather, music, movies, restaurants. There's nothing wrong with that. 
I do have groups of friends where that is the topic of conversation. And it's probably the best topic of conversation because uh, it may be that, uh, you know, the conversations will go astray if they are not emotionally mature enough or if they take things personally when we start to talk about these heavier topics. But I would say by and large, people that are willing to talk about principles and ideas and ethics and morals and spirituality, even if they don't have believe in God, having these discussions, I believe is a sign of um, intelligent people that they can entertain new ways of thinking and different perspectives. They're not afraid to consider different perspectives because they don't take it personally and they're emotionally mature, and they have a curious mind. You see how all of these things build one upon another. I would say that intelligent people are not stuck in complaining. Now, I know I have done my fair share of complaining, and there's nothing wrong with getting those irritations off your chest. On my Living Swell channel, I have a whole series about how to deal with irritations and frustrations and dread and anxiety and all of that. And I know that I can get easily irritated by certain things, but I real I catch myself. And when I'm complaining, I will change that up. And instead of complaining, then I want to make sure that I am looking for solutions and I'm not just stuck in that spin cycle of complaining and complaining is contagious. So I also have videos about that on the Living Swell channel about how to break through that complaining and what to do instead. Look for the solutions, look for the positive outcome that you may not have seen yet. So things could turn out better than expected. And that leads me actually to the next number, which is looking for solutions. And you personally may not have the solutions. That's why I say looking for solutions, not necessarily that you have to come up with them, but that leads us back to being curious, digging deeper, asking questions, having these conversations, connecting with people that might have the solutions that you are looking for. So being a solutions oriented person is very much for me, an indicator of of someone's uh, who someone who is intelligent. All right, willing to take action even if you don't know how. <laughs> That's a big one. I did not know anything about Title VII uh, religious discrimination laws. I did not know anything about civil rights laws in terms of going shopping, breathing oxygen, and not becoming a human pincushion. I had to learn about all of that. I took action by rolling up my sleeves and digging in and asking questions and doing the research. Now, you may not have a proclivity for the research. That does not mean that you're any less intelligent. It just means that we all are gifted in certain areas. But the point is that I took action. You have taken action. I'd like to hear the action that you've taken in a comment below. Have you gone to the board meetings? Have you shared videos? Have you had conversations? Have you stood up for yourself? All of those are examples of taking action, even if you didn't know exactly what to do. Often we learn what to do by taking the action. On my website, thehealthyamerican.org, I have pages and pages and pages of different resources and remedies and letters and uh, suggestions for standing up against tyranny. Some of those things I probably would rewrite and update because I have learned things over time. So that is how we learn and grow. And that's actually the next point that we are always looking for opportunities to learn and grow. And I think that is extremely important. Intelligent people are not stale. They are not, um, lethargic uh, mentally. They want to develop that capacity of thinking, of reasoning, of questioning, of, as we call it, uh, critical thinking, which basically is just thinking, thinking about something, asking questions, and not accepting it at face value. So uh, the last couple that I want to men mention, I think, for me, really give me the indication of whether someone has a certain level of intelligence or not. And I would say that having a sense of humor is a sign of intelligence. And I do understand that certain people, and I'm not saying that they have to be comedians and come up with all the jokes. That's not what I mean at all. But being able to discern wit and cleverness 
in a turn of phrase. <laughs> For example, I've got all sorts of phrases like connecting the clots and the public serpents. And I've had people say to me, um, you mispronounce that, Peggy, it's public servants. I'm like, okay, that's a person that doesn't really have a well-developed sense of wit or clever humor. And I'm not talking about, you know, slapstick humor, although it could be funny for some where people are, you know, falling down. They have all sorts of videos on YouTube about the fails where people are trying to, you know, launch their boat or ride a bicycle. I, I personally don't like to watch those, but I like clever humor where you are thinking and reasoning and connecting the clots. So I would say, although some people are more serious, it's just their God-given nature. They, uh, even little children sometimes don't have a sense of humor because they don't have that ability to imagine or think outside the box. It like it doesn't fit exactly A to Z, so they feel uncomfortable with that. But I do believe that people with um, you know a certain level of intelligence are able to understand humor, and I certainly hope so because I use a lot of humor on this platform, and I do it in a way to help people think. Because if I were just to sit down and say, "Look, here is why the suffocation devices don't work." They're just going to turn it off if they're not interested. But when I do it in a funny way, hopefully it gets the point across where I say, hey, I'll wear a raincoat to keep you dry. And they're like, wait a minute, how does that work? And it's not, it's a little more lighthearted. Granted, I probably miss the mark from time to time, but again, I'm not perfect. And I would add that into the list of intelligent people that they are willing to let go of that uh, obsession perhaps is the word with perfectionism. And I'm still working on that in my department. The final thing that I wanted to mention, and there's probably many more, and I can't wait to read your comments on this, but I would say a major indicator of someone who is intelligent. And I think this is where sadly, a lot of people uh, are just missing the mark. A major indicator of intelligence is when someone is able to admit that they were duped and then learn and grow from that. So I believe that people that feel inferior in their knowledge or, or intelligence or mental capacity, I believe that once they've learned something or they believe it, or they they've lived a certain way, and then it comes along more information that can be shared with them to say, you know what, what you believed and did like, isn't, you didn't have to do it and you were lied to. It's so difficult for certain people to let go of that because they take it as an attack on their intelligence. And they're thinking, oh my gosh, how could I have been duped? How could I have been so easily swindled and bamboozled? I must, I, I can't believe I was so stupid. I can't believe I was so gullible. I can't believe I was so naive. Those phrases are not helpful at all. Better phrases are things like, um, consarnate, there's an old fashioned term. Those diabolical bad guys tried to get me. Thank goodness that I can see through their lies now. And they tried to pull the wool over my eyes, but now I can see it and I am going to learn and grow from this. That is what I believe an intelligent person does. They can admit when they've bam been bamboozled, they don't take it personally because it was the bad guys that were doing it. It's almost like somebody that was cheated or swindled in some business deal. And I know people personally that have been cheated. I have been cheated. And instead of saying, oh, how could I have fallen for that? No, the, for me, a better statement is, how could that guy have been such a cheater? He's the one that should be uh, having all of the regrets, not me. I mean, thank goodness I was a person that, you know, is trusting and uh, looks for the best in people. So that's how I would interpret it. Let me know what you think about this concept of people who are unable to admit that they were duped and to pull their shoulders back, sit up straight and say, you know what? I'm not going to let that happen to me again. I'm going to be a critical thinker. I'm going to be more curious. I'm going to ask questions and I'm going to look for solutions. I'm not going to complain about this and I am going to learn and grow. 
All right, friends, that's what I've got for you about uh, signs of intelligent life. And I can't wait to read your comments as well. I've got another video coming up for you, which is actually what I call a top hit. And my top hits are videos that I've already broadcast, but they were so well received. And I think that the message is so important. And I have new viewers here on this channel and many people do not go back and watch previous videos. So I would love for you to watch this video about four states that can forcibly quarantine you. Now, there are probably more states that can do that. These are the four that I have researched, and I will continue to do this research as well. And I want to thank all of you healthy Americans that have been my top researchers, sending me links to videos, giving me story ideas, giving me your questions and what you've been reading between the lies. And you can email that to support at thehealthyamerican.org. Please know that you might not always get a response just because we have so many lovely um, people that subscribe and follow what we're doing here. And so sometimes those emails, are, we just are inundated and I'm not always able to personally reply to you, but please know that I do get those emails or my assistant does, and she will scan those and forward certain ones to me. So I want to thank all of you here publicly for what you've done. Many of you have sent me letters in the mail and I'm woefully behind in my thank you notes. My uh, supporter here, Rhonda, who is also a moderator, helps me with my correspondence. And so I'm really grateful for that as well. I appreciate you. I thank you. And I look forward to seeing you in the very next broadcast. Be sure you're on my Substack, peggyhall.substack.com. That's where you get my written comments and analysis. And you can keep those. You can forward them. You can click through the links. And it's just another tool against tyranny. See you soon, everybody.